Jane Saxby. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and it is indeed a pleasure to see you back in this House on International Women's Day. Um, and it's a, a pleasure to follow um, the Honourable Lady from North Shropshire, whose constituency in many ways reflects my own, and uh, many of the issues she highlighted are the same that I am going to hopefully bring some colour to the challenges from a constituency perspective around providing social care, because Devon really is like a prism of the future. We have an elderly population who are only getting older. Um, and if you want to see what the rest of the country looks like in 20, 30 years' time, come to Devon. And therefore, I would urge the Minister that if any of these great ideas coming out of today's debate could be trialled, I'd like to recommend Devon as a great place to come and trial and test them, because we are already down this journey of our county council frantically trying to balance its budget. 25 per cent of their budget is currently spent on adult social care. That has been increased, inflation adjusted, by 23 per cent in the last decade alone. As um, the Honourable Member for North Shropshire mentioned, rurality is a huge factor. North Devon, my own constituency, is remote, rural and coastal, and the distances involved in providing adult social care are monumental. Um, the, cost, the, the dramatic rise in energy costs had a huge impact on those social care providers to actually just be able to deliver the same service, and the increase in budget unfortunately <laughs> does not fully reflect that. That also impacts on the manner in which care is delivered within those communities because of the distance that the individual teams are having to travel between their daily stop-offs. When that's overlaid with the pressures that this is placing on the hospital, we know that some of these carers are having to make multiple visits a day to one family in a way that previously they might have been able to do one or two. They're now perhaps doing three. Um, and this is escalating into a snowball effect of costs rising far higher than actually they're being reflected by the council. I'm now being contacted by providers of social care, very concerned about what's actually happening and their ability to continue to provide the care. Um, I have one very innovative care provider who does pay their care workers on a shift basis to reflect the distances that are travelled and the amount of time otherwise that care workers are not working. Um, versus a contact time payment methodology. However, given the likely increase coming forward in this next budget, they are possibly going to be unlikely to continue that. But for them, it's been how they've retained and trained up their fabulous team of staff, because it is actually a great package that they're able to offer to that team. Because if you have to drive between appointments, why shouldn't you be paid for the time of driving? Because it's the only way to get there. But what I would like to suggest is perhaps we need to look at redesigning the scheme in these remote rural locations. As the Minister well knows from um, previous roles, we have a particular housing pressure in North Devon, and therefore the um, the idea that you could perhaps uh, remunerate a social care worker with accommodation as part of their package and enable them to serve that remote commu rural community without having to spend hours in the car driving between remote rural communities may be a different way of looking at it. This might not be the right department to suggest this, but I do think we cannot keep pretending this system is working. We need to find some other ways to look to slightly different solutions, particularly when rurality is being overlaid because what's actually happening at the moment is that clients are being transferred away from the better qualified and um, better quality care providers because the council budgets will not stretch and that is not right for the individuals involved it, it feels fundamentally wrong to me that i know that this is going on on my doorstep and in north devon we are home to the fabulous but smallest and most rural hospital in mainland Britain. And it's not right that there is a queue of ambulances regularly outside that hospital because we cannot discharge out of the back end because of the lack of social care. Yet I have social care providers telling me they have capacity, but the council will not pay their rates to provide it. Um, and so I very much hope as part of this process, somebody will look at the fair cost of care exercise in Devon, because there is some concern about about the data that's been submitted is not perhaps being accepted as the true price of delivering that care um, and we really need to acknowledge the prices involved because these are humans that we need to look after and care for in our communities and I think there's also a concern coming through um, that this is driving a growth in unregulated personal assistants and private carers because of the pressures on costs that our councillor are facing and I think the final point I would really like to make is the need of, of course I would give over about the, the fair cost of care. 
Uh, there's a real concern from the local government association. I declare my um, interest as a vice president of that organisation. The, 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 the money the government was making available was not based on a detailed assessment which councils had done about the difference between what people may be paying for their care privately and what, and what councils are paying. And, and suddenly, if councils end up with those extra costs, the, 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 the amount will be much more in the local government association's view than the amount the government was putting on one side under their initial reform proposals. Gentleman, for his intervention, um, and there is just so much more work that needs to be done in, in this space. And um, the final point I would like to make is really about the need to look for longer term funding solutions for social care, but whilst I have the opportunity, also as mentioned by the Honourable Member for Ashford for potholes, because part of the reason some of these funding settlements don't add up is that when we put in a short-term funding solution, you're unable to plan long-term, and I estimate we're possibly paying twice as much per pothole repair as a result of these short-term settlements, which are stopping councils being able to plan their workforce, plan their work, um, plan materials effectively. So I very much hope, as we move forward, that there will be an opportunity to address some of these, because this is having an impact on all council services because of the pressure on the budgets, um, not to mention the individuals and fantastic care staff involved. Barbara Keeley. Thank you, Madam yeah, Deputy yeah, Speaker. Yeah. Well, um,